Hey guys, I'm going to be showing you how to do some of the troubleshooting steps on one of our Electrolux Solero and Frigidaire Solero dishwashers today. Alright guys, to start this, I'm going to open my door. Now while the, the keypad's illuminated, while we still have a time on the display before it goes back to sleep, so if you're counting one, two, three, those are the only buttons we use on this entire keypad to enter diagnostics or to go through troubleshooting. We're going to hold our first and our third button for probably about five seconds. You're going to see these three lights start flashing. That lets us know that we've gotten in. We're going to hit the first button one time. I-10, that is the last stored error code on this unit, which I actually have an I-10 because I forgot to turn the water on whenever I installed this unit. Second error code, I-00, that means nothing. There's no stored error code there. This thing stores up to three error codes, which means that our third error code is also going to be an I-00 because it stores them in order. So the last error code is always going to be first, the most recent. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the first button again. We're going to go to test number four. Now test number four is for what they call the regeneration valve. That's on European models, not on the North American sold units. We don't have water softeners inside of our units. So we're going to jump to test number five. Five is our drain pump. Once we shut the door, it's going to activate our drain pump. I did have some water left inside of my unit. After I, uh, after I turned the water valve on, I did turn the, the unit on for a little bit to make certain everything was okay before I started doing all this. So it did drain out my water. Drain pump is running right now. So I'm not going to go through every single test because I do not use every single test whenever I'm, I'm doing this step through diagnostics. I'm just going to show you the test that I use. So test six is our fill valve. Shut the door, we should hear water coming in, and which I do. Water is entering the unit right now. Now I like to let it run to make certain that I have enough water for the pump to push around whenever we get to test number eight and it just shut off. I'm going to hit it two times. Test seven's my heater. I do not want to test the heater um, without the motor running because otherwise it's just sitting in the water. We're going to run to eight. Eight is my wash pump. Then I do hear my wash pump energize. Let that run for a minute. Just verify operation. We're going to hit the first button again to test nine. Nope. Make certain that your dispenser door is closed. If you don't, then you're just going to hear a click instead of actually hearing the dispenser door open on test nine. Mine just popped open. So I got an open dispenser. We're going to go to the next test, 10. Which I don't, test 10 doesn't do anything on this unit. So I'm going to skip over test 10, 11, go straight to 12. 12 is my fan. And I do hear the fan running. It's actually down here on the bottom, but you can hear it actually pulling air throughout the unit. So that is basically all the tests that I run whenever we, we go through diagnostics that way. Now, if you hit the cancel button one time, it's going to kick you out and bring you back to the normal operation. We're going to hold the first and third button again. I'm going to show you what else you can do here. I got my three lights blinking again. If you hit the second button, it's going to illuminate everything on this display and it's going to clear out our error codes. So if we were to go back to test number one and walk through, all of our error codes should be I00, I00, I00 for the three stored codes because I just cleared them out. So we're going to hit the cancel button again, take us right back to normal operation. I'm going to hold the first and third buttons again until I get them to uh, start blinking for me and we're going to hit the third button. Now it's given me 13 minutes. Every unit's a little bit different. This one, the calibration cycle is 13 minutes. What is a calibration cycle? It's like a short cycle that the dishwasher runs to to validate, to verify operation of all the different components. And it helps to calibrate the pressure sensor and the, all of that stuff gets calibrated during this short little test. Now, whenever it completes the calibration cycle, it's just like any cycle on the dishwasher. 
As soon as it finishes this 13 minute short test, it's going to go back to a dormant state until the consumer's ready to open the door, press buttons, and start using it. But once this test is done, they can immediately start using the unit again. You want to do this calibration test every time you replace a pressure sensor on one of these components just to ensure that it is calibrated properly. All right, guys, so we've gone through and I've shown you how to check your codes, pull your codes, check your codes, run various components on the unit. We've gone through how to clear the codes and how to run the calibration cycle. But the one thing you're probably asking yourself, usually the, the one of the most common um, service calls on one of these units or on any dishwasher for that matter is the heater. How do you verify if the heater is actually working on the unit? So it does tell you test number seven of our diagnostics runs the heater. I have never gotten the heater to come on effectively using that. What I like to do, it's a little trick that, that we've learned. If you look at your tech sheet, which this is down under the kick plate under the bottom of the unit, it gives you the four cycles or it gives you four cycles that this unit runs. The China Crystal, the Energy Saver, Power Plus or Heavy Duty, your, your unit can have the Power Plus option or it will have the Heavy option and then a normal wash and on each of these it tells you when components activate. If you look at the Heavy Power Plus cycle, it actually utilizes the heater within that first fill and wash cycle. We call it a pre-wash cycle, but the very first, the beginning cycle that's like about five, six minutes long, it actually fills and energizes the heater. So what I've done is I've put my meter down here in the bottom. I've got it clamped around my incoming voltage wire. We're going to open up the door. We're going to select heavy. We're going to hit start and we're going to close the door. Now all I have to do is sit here and wait. The unit's going to go through a drain it drains out for about a minute, then it's going to fill. Once it's done filling, then it's going to energize the motor and then we should have the amp draw from the heater. Now, the heater on this unit pulls the highest amperage of anything else. It's the only thing on this unit that pulls more than one amp. It actually pulls about seven to eight amps. So it's usually pretty noticeable by monitoring your meter whenever that, that heater does energize. We're just going to be patient and hang out and wait to see what's happening. Right now it's filling up, pulling about 0 0.7, 0 0.6, which is pretty good for a, for a water, water valve. They don't pull a lot of amperage. Sounds like my motor's starting to try to move around. It's still filling, but I do hear motor, I hear movement inside. We're up to 0.2 amps right now. The motor's slowly starting to drive more water, but it is still filling. We haven't finished our fill yet. Worked our way up to 0.4. There it goes, seven amps. My heater is energized, my heater is working, otherwise I would not be getting that high amp draw. So yeah, in this case, my heater's working. If they're having any type of cleaning issues or drying issues, check the rinse aid, check your incoming water temperature, make certain that they're not over cleaning the dishes before they place the dishes inside of the dishwasher. Those are three key things that always mess a consumer up. They've got to have 120 degree water or as close to it as possible coming into this unit they have to use rinse aid. And my rule of thumb whenever I was in the field was scrape and load. You want to scrape the big chunks off the dishes. We don't need the, the rice and stuff down there in the sump or in the filters. We want to keep all the oils and the, the sauce residues. We want those on the dishes so the enzymes and the detergent have something to attack. But in this case, my heater's working. We've gone through and verified everything else is working. This is a functioning unit. Uh, if it's not work performing properly for the consumer, chances are it's something that they're doing. It's not a fault of the unit. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this out.